On December 2011, Tunisia erupted. Decades of dictatorship, corruption charges, and political and religious restrictions, and gross violation of human rights, the people forced Ben Ali out of the country. The tyrannical rule ignored and suppressed by the Western media has only made news now. This is the direct message Tunisia's youth want to send to President Zain al Abidin Ben Ali. Mr. President, people only want to live and their voices are not heard. Go to the street and see with your eyes. To the Tunisian regime. Um, President Ben Ali yesterday promised more open. It appears to be the end for Tunisia's president after 23 years in power. The Tunisian people, because of their courage and valiant efforts, ushered new aspirations to the Tunisian people and to the Arab world. The world applauded, and so did the United States and its allies. And tonight, let us be clear, the United States of America stands with the people of Tunisia and supports the democratic aspirations of all people. And soon, Protests and demonstrations erupted across the Arab world, but the most prominent was in Egypt. On the streets of Cairo, Egyptian riot police fire water cannons, rubber bullets and tear gas at demonstrators who promised a Friday of wrath. The biggest protest so far in the capital calling for an end. This time too the world applauded, but the United States and the Western powers, the media and the commentators were hesitant. Tony Blair called Mubarak an immensely courageous and a force for good, while Dick Cheney called him a good friend. And look what Bill O'Reilly has to say about the situation. There is chaos tonight in Cairo, Egypt, and throughout that country of 80 million people. Spurred on by the collapse of the Tunisian dict dictatorship, the Egyptians are revolting against their president, Hosni Mubarak, a brutal dictator who has done little to improve the standard of living in Egypt, but has done many favors, many favors for the United States. The problem here is that if Mubarak is overthrown, and that is likely, who will take his place? Right now, the fear in Washington is that the Muslim Brotherhood will seize power. They are jihadists who hate America and who will help Al Qaeda all day long. For decades. Did you see the scare tactics? He is trying to sell the American interest by convincing you there is no other alternative. No, Mr. O'Reilly, the dichotomy is wrong. So why the discrepancies? Let's compare Egypt and Tunisia. Not only is Egypt a strategic and economic ally, it's also one of the biggest recipients of military aids totaling of $40 billion. It makes sense. Why would anyone ruin their own investment? Not to mention Egypt has Suez Canal and also Egypt is a strong ally of Israel. While Tunisia in most cases is irrelevant. And Egypt, unlike Tunisia, contains strong Islamic movements like Ikhwan or the Muslim Brotherhood who would never tolerate foreign intrusion. So they applaud one revolution here and shun the aspirations of another. This isn't new considering Gaza and the recent elections in Iran. In times of revolutions, which we are witnessing across the Arab world, the Arabs must understand what it takes for a successful and a long-lasting revolution. There are three primary principles. Number one, unity. Unity in causes like self-determination, upholding justice, freedoms, etc. And unity in eradication of a common problem or a common enemy. Because once you find a common problem or a common enemy, let's say foreign intrusion as an example, then people won't go around blaming each other. Number two, leadership. Without leadership, the masses will move aimlessly, and a leader should not be solely nominated because of his diplomatic or political savviness. Rather, he should also have a high moral and religious regard. And number three, examples. The Arabs must learn from relevant history and successful revolutions of the past so they can better implement their own ideas and goals. 
an example you ask well Islamic Republic of Iran, 32 years and counting and going stronger and stronger. Some say it's impossible for Egyptians, Tunisians, Jordanians, Yemenis to follow Iran which is predominantly Shia and them being predominantly Sunni. But if we accept the unity of cause and common problem, it's irrelevant if they are of different sects and of different borders. Far too long have Muslims been divided, and religious difference, which should have been tolerated, has sown a deep divide and vendettas against each other. Iran has taken steps in the past and today to promote brotherhood. Just recently, a fatwa was issued by Sayyid Ali Khamenei, the Shia leader and the leader of Iran, to stop cursing of Sunni personalities and leaders, and to promote unity and brotherhood. A fatwa or verdict issued by Iran's leader Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei which bans any insult to the companions of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and his wives. And in a quick response, the head of Al-Hazhar University, the largest Sunni university in the world located in Egypt, replied with a mutual response of love and compassion. His wives. It's Ahmad al tayyib said in a statement that the fatwa was prudent and timely and would help ram the door shut to seditions. It seems Sayyid Ali Khamenei had sensed change and made his move before anyone else. And it's strange, for many decades, Islam was quietly and openly suppressed and Western secular values were promoted or many times shoved down the throats of the Muslims in Egypt, in Tunisia and elsewhere. Yet the aspiration of Islamic State and the Brotherhood has once again risen. Friday public prayers for the first time in 50 years in Tunisia took place and where hijab was once banned, now protesters are demanding this as well. I guess Muslims have not forgotten the verse of the Holy Quran. They wish to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will not agree except that He will perfect His light, even if the disbelievers get annoyed. So you ask yourself, what's your responsibility? What can you do? You don't have to be an Arab or even living in a Muslim country. Your responsibility is also essential. Number one, promote unity and see the common similarities. Number two, tolerate the differences. Number three, identify a common cause for failure or a common enemy. And number four, don't be afraid to defend the truth by any means.